What up, man? So, thought I'd make you a video, give you a little rundown, and uh, kind of explain computer buying 101. There's a few things you need to keep in mind whenever you're shopping for a computer. Number one, don't listen to the bullshit that you hear on the internet. Uh, computers are just like anything else with men, specifically, where they turn their hobby into a giant dick measuring contest. And uh, if it's not the absolute best on the market, then it's a piece of shit. It's not true. Number two is, um, a computer that is really good at one thing might be fucking horrible at what you actually intend to use it for. And number three is, don't get caught up in stats or, um, numbers that the manufacturer assigns to specific parts. Because the highest number doesn't necessarily mean the best product. For example, an i7 isn't necessarily better than an i5. It can be in some certain, you know, certain circumstances. But that brings me into a little bonus tip for you. Um, it's something called overclocking. And you can turn something that is a lot cheaper with a lower number into something that would absolutely stomp the shit out of something that looks like it's twice as good on the box. So with those three things in mind, let me just give you the rundown, just the nitty gritty of what each component does um, and what it's useful for. And you could probably fill in the blanks on your own. The first thing we'll start with is the case. The case is basically good for two things. Uh, number one is airflow, and number two is aesthetic. What it looks like when it's sitting on your desk. Obviously the most important part of the case is the airflow. Um, if you think of your computer as like an engine, the thing has to breathe. It has to be able to push hot air out and suck cool air from your room in. So it, if it can't breathe and you get a bunch of hot air trapped in a case that has no ventilation, you're going to have some serious problems down the road and it might not take long before you start burning out components. Now the second thing is aesthetic. For the most part, any case that you're going to come across that is uh, empty, that you buy specifically for a custom built PC that you're gonna put together yourself or have someone else put together for you. Um, the manufacturers know that if you're building a computer, you're taking pride in it and you're proud of it. So the vast majority of them put heat treated glass on one side of the panel. That way everybody in the room can see all the internals and see the fan spinning and see all the lights and all the fanciness but keep in mind that you can pay a lot of money for aesthetic and end up with a case that's a piece of shit when it comes to performance so after the case is motherboard motherboards can be mm, tricky because a lot of people think that it's the most important thing about a computer just because it's the biggest component. It's the giant computer chip that you mount to the back of your case that all of your components hook up to. When in reality, the most important aspect of a motherboard is features. And by features, I mean ports in the back of your computer. All your USB ports, all of your um, video connectors, like is it DisplayPort, is it HDMI, that kind of thing. You know, you want to be able to use the things that you have. And if you don't have ports for it in the back of your computer, you're shit out of luck. Now, next thing we're talking about is your CPU or central processing unit. Um, it's your processor in your computer. It's the frontal lobe of the brain. It's what actually processes information as you throw things at it. Um, and 
the better it is, the faster it can think, the faster it can analyze and assess information that it gathers, um, create an understanding of what you're trying to do, and figure out how to optimize the performance of your system so that you can get the best experience and the fastest and smoothest um, you know, response time that it'll allow. If there's two things out of this entire list that I personally recommend you consider most important whenever you're spending your money, um, it's your processor and your graphics card. We'll get the graphics card later, but don't skip on your processor. The next thing is RAM. Random access memory is what that stands for. Sometimes it's called memory. But think of that as like your short-term memory. Whenever you're doing a task, you're working on something, uh, you're doing a job, or it is running an application, it's the short-term memory of what you're doing. So in other words, if I'm running an application that requires multiple tasks that are repetitive, um, having a good short-term memory is helpful because all of those small repetitive tasks can come to you a lot faster and you can remember a lot more of them as you're performing whatever you are performing. Now, this is kind of a trap, too, because you might think, well, the more RAM I have, the faster my computer's going to be. Well, not necessarily. So to better help you understand this, I'll give you an example. Um, a server, computer server, is typically used for uh, handling all of the smaller tasks that are done in the background of an organization. Uh, they're not really dedicated to anything specific. They're more about handling a lot of different things all at once. Whereas a gaming PC is all about getting the most performance you possibly can get out of performing one specific task, running a game or an application. So a processor, or I'm sorry, a server will have a lot more RAM in it but not necessarily as fast of a processor. Whereas a gaming PC will have less RAM in it with a smoking processor. So since the server has a bunch of shit to do, but none of it is very complicated, its short-term memory is a lot more important than how fast it thinks. Whereas a gaming PC, it's all about speed and that short-term memory, it, it doesn't really matter. Now, the next thing to focus on is your power supply, or PSU, power supply unit, that's what it's called. Um, they're usually pretty self-explanatory, but there's two things you need to keep in mind. Number one is its wattage. What's its max level of power that it can pump into the system? And number two, it's efficiency. And efficiency doesn't necessarily mean you know, my light bill might be less each month if I pick this one over that one. Uh, what efficiency means is how well it can ramp up the power for performance, but then also reduce it to make sure that the components in your computer that can't handle that much power can still stay alive. Uh, just pro tip on that one, if you never heard of the brand, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Now, the last thing is your graphics card. And this is what everybody focuses on whenever they're building a gaming PC. Mm, I don't know. I'm not too impressed by them. Um, obviously, they're essential. They're very important as far as making sure that you can play this game without any lag or delay and that your PC can keep up with the maximum amount of settings that you can possibly handle with your system um, but don't get carried away with this I'm gonna give you some advice on this one and again don't listen to the internet trolls the GPU industry 
GPU, graphics processing unit. Um, it's just like anything else. It's very clickbaity and it's very much overkill um, as far as what's practical versus what's attractive. And this kind of goes back to don't listen to the internet because it's a giant dick measuring contest. Once you get past eight inches, what's the point? I can spend $500 right now on a graphics card that would run literally any game that I find on Steam or any mainstream gaming um, distributor at its highest level of graphics settings for about $500. The latest version of graphics cards, they're running about $4,500. Yeah, they look cool. It's something to brag about. But it's not really necessary. Alright, maybe that was a little bit of an exaggeration. Maybe not 4500 But, you know, you spend $2,000 on something that you could have spent $500 on and got the same results, it'd probably piss you off. So that's basically about it. Those are the components of a computer, you know, for the most part. Um, everything else is more about brand and more about um, aesthetic, more about, you know, very minor differences in performance levels that really can only be seen on a chart or a graph. But to the human eye, you would have no idea which one was which. So if you're interested in the computer, I have some sources, some websites that we can go to together or you can go to and send me whatever you think um, you might like that help you build computers by picking out components. And every time you pick a component, it changes what it actually shows you based on uh, whether or not those components are compatible with each other. So it really kind of keeps you in a safe lane uh, with, while also showing you a fairly realistic budget of what you're going to spend and, you know, keeps everything in line so that you can better understand what you're trying to buy. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Deuces.